Okay, uh, this is quick tip tutorial about how to make sharp ZBrush displacement map out of ZBrush using ZBrush latest version which is 2021 update 5 and I only select this uh, we got something like that right now I got you know 8 million uh, polygons let me switch quickly to standard so you can see a little better what's going on so uh, we got something like this and uh, even though I got the body as well and the polygon count isn't that much I'm going to make this sharp using the new uh, ZBrush uh, contrast brush and it really works and uh, it really makes the details sharper and makes the render in Maya 3ds max or whatever software you're using better and sharper because previously we had to use something like Mari to sharpen up the details and, and mix it with the ZBrush displacement map but right now it works really nice and I will show you how so I switch to contrast brush I go to the C, I grab the contrast target, make sure I got the Z add, I press a space, and I zoom in. And before doing anything, we could store some kind of morph target. So I turn on my symmetry, and I start sharpening this tank up. And if it is too much or whatever, you can easily decrease that using the uh, Maya or 3ds Max and our displacement map shader. And there is nothing to worry about. So it just uh, boosts this up and. Sharpen this, and before uh, doing anything further, let me review something quickly. Okay, uh, in order to have a nice and detailed displacement map, you need to have OK UV. The ZBrush uh, for for something organic like this, you need to unwrap your map outside of ZBrush and sadly something like Maya or 3ds Max or whatever because right now uh, ZBrush won't support the manual uh, unwrapping uh, it's gonna be in the future for sure but right now it doesn't support that so you need to have OK UV and enough topology enough and OK topology and you need to divide the mesh enough and the, the list the least you know, amount of topology is something like that and after that you need to sharpen the details like uh, what I'm doing right now and you can exaggerate that a little and if you feel like it is too much or whatever you can come back and grab the morph brush switch to the add only and just you know push it back like so but I just you know keep it that way to have something a little exaggerated to dem demonstrate uh, better so right now I want to export this out so I go to the multi map exporter and I want to use displacement map and I want to use 8k and if you got the UDIMs, you need to click on the file names and switch to UDIM. So do that. And just quickly go to displacement map. And I want to export from the level 2. I usually do that. 
Uh, I keep the mid value as zero. Keep this off, and I want to have 32 bit and EXR. Create all maps, and I just go to destination folder. And I made some new folder, and I type just displacement map, displacement map, or whatever, and I just save it. So it's gonna be 8K, and you saw the settings, and I don't explain the settings, and just to keep everything a little shorter. And I wanna export the level two or one uh, from the mesh itself as well. That's why it takes a little while because I got three UDMs on this. And I switch to my level one. At level one I got you know 30k, uh, which is a lot and I can use that. So it's gonna be face uh, level one. I exported from level 2 it because it usually works better but if you got something like this and your first level is dense you can export from level two, uh, level 1 as well so I jump back into Maya and in the Maya import the mesh so this is that mesh and this happens because we need to turn off the uh, groups go uh, get rid of groups export face come back Uh, that's it. I go to the perspective view. I put something like 200. Uh, we got a little pixelation, so I grab this, press 3 on my keyboard, press yes. And right after that, I want to go to the hyper shade. And I press tab and I type AI a standard surface and it's gonna be the skin it's very basic just to demonstrate the uh, settings for displacement map so I grab this go to the file and in the file I switch to place that I got displacement map so I select this I got uh, three UDIMs uh, for my UVs I just import that in, you can right click and refresh the uh, thumbnail in there make sure you got the row and alpha is luminous and always for the spec maps, code maps and black and white maps switch to this, it is really important to know this and I come back in here and I just switch this to UDIM Mori uh, we always you know use this you know pretty much uh, is UDIMRE for almost everything that I use so I select this and let me just drag this to somewhere so you can see better so I select this and I middle mouse drag to this and I can you know open this up just put something for this spec I go to subsurface and I increase that and I just put something you know peachy you know orangish color go click on this and go to the file open this and I import the poly paints that I got from the ZBrush as well Again, I switch to Mari UDIMs and I can right click and refresh this as well and I can grab them all and I can click on this to make you know, bigger thumbnails for myself and uh, if you want to change the look of your map you can you know uh, use this you know exposure and alpha gain, alpha offset 
to change the look or just switch it fuse this to AI color correct but uh, this is not the case I'm going to show you only the, this map so we need to add some lights and I switch to Arnold lights and grab this lights in here and uh, you can use Maya default lights for the Arnold they work really good with the Arnold they have no issues uh, even I use uh, from time to time the Maya default ones for the Arnold so you can use them as well for different you know purposes but right now I just use the normal Arnold lights and I just switch to something like 4 for the intensity put 12 and this one 2 and 3 maybe 12 grab the mesh go to the Arnold it's better to put something in here go to the subdivision switch that to Cathy Clark uh, because in ZBrush we have five subdivisions yes you can either use the three or four I first go with the three it's better first test it with three because uh, four is oftentimes a little heavy first test it with three so I can sample this and I can go look at the selection so I can zoom easily and find this object I can open this up and I go to my settings and click on this open the settings for render and in here at type 5 I keep it at progressive this is very good setting for testing stuff put 3 for the diffuse keep everything you know pretty much uh, as the default make sure I got uh, everything unticked in here so it's all right now I can click on this and I press that play icon in there to, to see what's what we are having for our scene okay wait it's converting to a TX file yeah it takes a little while to take off and uh, I need to decrease the amount of the subsurface this is too much so I come back to my material and I need to decrease that uh, pretty much yeah I just put something like one two I know what to and you see the difference on the fly and let me just grab this put something higher and I click on display icon and just zoom in okay it started to render it takes a little while to launch right now you see this is very sharp it's like Mari displacement map so because of the boosting of the maps uh, using the contrast brush you can you know and make really huge differences in your displacement map right now uh, we couldn't do that uh, like this before we could you know sharpen the displacement map in Photoshop but it wasn't going to work something like this for sure but as you see it's working really nicely Can you know. and this part you know as you remember we exaggerated the pores a little too much but as you see it's working really nicely 
So using the contrast brush in the latest ZBrush uh, feature, you can make the this map really sharp, and it's not gonna need any more Mari this maps for you know general use. At least I can say. So it's really good you know feature. So you see it's working with the subsurface really really sh uh, really sharp and nicely. It's exactly like what we have inside of ZBrush. And you can use it for general, you know, projects. Okay, so that's it that I wanted to explain this uh, for you and thanks a lot for watching. See ya.